I think of my studio as sort of a hub within a larger system. So it's different kinds of forces come together. Either it's like a productive kind of actually producing objects. It's also where I tend to write. It's also where um, I plan out exhibitions. It's it's where studio visits happen. It's, it's things like that. So I think of it as kind of a, a place where different kind of energies or forces are sort of condensed and come together and produce a kind of outcome. And the variety of outcomes, there's a range of outcomes that it produces. My name is Walid Beshti. I live in Los Angeles and I'm an artist. Art making is sort of intertwined with, for me, with a variety of different sort of uh, pursuits. I don't really see it as discrete, necessarily. I write, I organize exhibitions, uh, I teach, although I recently stopped. Um, and I see all of that as kind of intertwined because art, and, uh, I would describe as a, as a social discourse. To describe my practice, it's kind of, I find it a little bit difficult because it's, um, I would say that it encompasses a lot of things that people don't traditionally describe as necessarily an art practice or an artist's practice or not um, within the sort of the umbrella of what, what you would call an art practice. The studio itself is about like 8,500 square feet on a 1,400 square foot lot and the main, the main room um, has kind of tall, tall ceilings. I just got finished organizing a show for the Hessel Museum called The Picture Industry, which was sort of a historical show dealing with the history of uh, technical images, uh, 1850 to the present. And there is a large anthology that's sort of attached to it that I'm editing. It's the second project that I'm, a book project that I'm editing. So it's about a hundred different texts uh, spanning the same time period. So right now in my studio are printouts of all of the text for the book kind of plastered all over the walls. Yeah, about, uh, you know, like seven feet high and then spanning the entire space. So right now it doesn't, it, I'm not sure what it looks like, but it might not look much like a studio. It looks, <laughs> looks a little like manic. <laughs> Lots of things tacked to the walls. Yeah. The interior of my studio looks like it's a renovated um, metal stamping uh, business. It was a mom and pop metal stampers. Uh, and it has a lot of drywall. <laughs> and is kind of warehouse-like, yeah. It's big, but r rent in LA is pretty reasonable. And that's one of the nice things about Los Angeles is that there's space. I'm on the corner of Union Pacific and uh, La Puerta, and La Puerta is a sort of largely residential street. And then um, Union Pacific is the old is actually named that for uh, the railroad company, and it's where the main rails, uh, the distribution network. So all these factories were sort of situated along the rail lines. So that's all light industrial, and then on the hubs are all all residential. So it's it's nice because there's actually families. There's actually kind of like. A, community and it's not just sort of a barren dead zone. I have a lot of chairs. I try to have a lot of chairs around. So there's chairs everywhere. <laughs> I wish I had beds everywhere like Judd. I think that's a good idea. But um, I tend not to be that productive when I'm laying down. So I don't think that would work for me. There is a bed. There, there's kind of a small apartment there. When, when I'm laying in that bed, no, nothing's being done. I would say a good day is a, f is a day that feels very focused. Um, where it, it, it kind of, where there's not too much distraction. Yeah, where things seem to be running efficiently. I mean, those are very general terms, but um, yeah. When it feels like everything is sort of, feels like it's focused on a particular outcome, because it's a, it's a place where like the, 
you know, I have this sort of luxury of trying to focus. So when that doesn't really work, it feels like squandered <laughs> in some sense. A bad day would be like disorganized and sort of disrupted. You know, any day that I get to spend there is generally speaking a pretty good day. My library's there, so there's about, I think I have about like eight or 9,000 books there. Um, and, uh, and otherwise, I have a dark room there. Um, so it's mostly, I mean, I don't keep a lot of personal items around, just really what I'm working on. And there's enough kind of extraneous or uh, the projects, especially with regard to this show, there were so many, you know, it spans so many different types of materials. There were so many things around that to bring other things in would be just sort of distracting. So, um, yeah. So it's mostly things that are very targeted towards whatever, whatever project is at hand. Do I have any tricks to get work done in the studio? I don't think I have any tricks. <laughs> I mean, anything that I do there is technically production. So really I can do whatever I want and I feel like it's all part of the same thing. Well, I tend to work in the studio, I mean, almost every day of the week. Um, you know, I'll take days off here and there, kind of at random, but, you know, uh, I don't keep a very fixed schedule. Sometimes I work late, sometimes I go in early, and sometimes I do a half day. So it's, you know, I like that kind of flexibility and the adaptability of it. The conditions under which I work, I basically listen to three things when I'm there, just so that I can tune stuff out. Uh, one would be the 1955 uh, Glenn Gould Goldberg variations because I've just heard it so much that there's no thinking involved in listening to it. And I also love his breathing on it, which is sort of nice to hear on stereo. Uh, Moondog, I listen to. Uh, Viking of Fifth Avenue. And, um, and The Greatest Hits of Enya. And they drive my employees insane. Especially Enya gets a lot of protest. I do do studio visits. I never really thought to hide anything. Maybe that's a good idea. Maybe I should hide things. I mean, I've been told I'm not very tactical about studio visits, that people have a whole drama of how they un un unveil what's going on, but I don't have a good, I don't have a good head for the dramatic or the narrative either. I tend to avoid both. I think every studio is sort of connected to like, I mean, that's the, that's the upside of, of being an artist, is that you can construct the way that you live your life in, um, in the way that's the most efficient for yourself. So a studio can be, you know, like a cooktop and a, and a bed, and, or it can be an expansive warehouse, or it could be whatever, and it's whatever suits how you wanna, how you wanna conduct your, yourself and your professional life. So that flexibility, I think, is important.